Good evening. A woman in her 70s has become the first person with coronavirus to die in the UK. The Royal Berkshire Hospital in Reading said she had underlying health issues, but she had not been abroad. The number of people infected in the UK has jumped again to 116, among them some children. Almost half of those who have the virus don't need hospital treatment. The UK's chief medical advisor, Professor Chris Whitty, says authorities across the country are now mainly trying to delay rather than contain the spread of the virus. Globally, there are now more than 97,000 cases of coronavirus. Of those, more than half, over 53,000, have recovered. The number of people who have died now stands at almost 3,500. With the latest, here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. According to the Royal Berkshire Trust, the patient had been in and out of hospital. She tested positive for the coronavirus last night. Condolences have been expressed to her family by the Trust, health leaders and the Prime Minister. Obviously, our sympathies are very much with the, the victim and the, their family. Uh, but the situation is, is pretty much as it has been, in the sense that we're still, Sam, in the, in the contained phase, though now uh, our scientists are, and, and medical advisors are making preparations for the delay phase. The first British fatality with the coronavirus, though outside the UK, was a tourist who'd been on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, which had been quarantined in Japan. More details of cases in the UK have emerged today. There are 45 people being treated in isolation at home. So far, 18 out of the overall total have fully recovered. But the source of infection in 10 cases remains unexplained. The NHS and other global health systems are struggling to contain the virus, according to the government's chief medical advisor. Delaying its spread is the next phase. He said half the cases could occur over a three-week peak of the epidemic. His comments coming in front of a committee of MPs. There will be a period, the beginning and the middle and end to this, before it people will see no major impact on the NHS, some reconfiguration, and after it the NHS will be back to its normal state. But there will be a period in the middle, if this goes to the top end of the range, and it may well not, but if it does, where the NHS has huge pressure on it for a relatively short period of time. The chief medical advisor outlined what he believed the benefits of the delay phase would be. First, it would push back the peak number of cases from winter when pressure on the NHS is greatest. It would buy time for scientists to improve their understanding of the virus and develop countermeasures such as drugs. And the virus would possibly be less infectious in the summer. Depending on when the peak comes and how many cases there are, intensive care beds will be in great demand. Concerns have been raised about whether the NHS can provide what's needed and whether too much pressure will be put on staff. I'm unbelievably proud to be a critical care nurse and I work with some fantastic staff, but we are human beings at the end of the day and all of us have a tipping point. So it is really, really important that we look after those staff to allow us to be able to look after patients. One senior doctor told me his hospital has plans to convert other facilities into intensive care units. It's going to be tough, but we have well-rehearsed plans and we're working together across our system and across all our staff to make sure that we do have those robust, pla those robust systems in place to cope with that increased demand. The warnings today have been on the basis of a worst-case scenario. Case numbers may be less than expected, but health leaders feel they need to prepare hospitals, their staff and patients for a potentially very tough time ahead. Hugh Pym, BBC News. The government has said it will accelerate work on preparations for the next phase, the delay phase of its plan to tackle coronavirus. That's when it will introduce further measures to try to stop its spread. Once the strategy is decided, it will be down to local authorities and communities to implement it. Our special correspondent Lucy Manning reports from Brighton on how they're readying themselves there. Brighton's already been hit by coronavirus. It contained the outbreak well, but like everyone else in the UK, it must now tackle delaying any further spread. Those living here have questions about how moving to this mainly delay phase will affect them. 
Are they going to impose us to all work from home? Is that going to be something that employers have to make decisions themselves? We've had lots of big events that have been cancelled, but it would be good to know how long this sort of thing would be going on for. It was a very simple message about washing your hands. For those in charge of health, the elderly, the schools, this is now a growing challenge. So it's up to each and every employer to make sure that people are ringing in sick, saying I'm not sure if I've got the coronavirus or not, to make sure that they're, they're staying at home. People are wanting to know how long this is going to last for. We may expect a, a three month period um, with a peak in that but um, one of the things we want to do obviously is to push that as far into the future as possible through the delay phase so that could come later in the year. My biggest concern really is over my son who's doing his GCSEs so it's obvious we need to know from his for him if he's going to be able to go to school and take his exams. All schools in Brighton and Hove are open uh, there's no plans for any of our schools to close. Are you trying to stop people get together in any public space? Are you going to look at cinemas, are going to look at restaurants, shopping centres? At the moment, our full programme of events is going ahead. And obviously, this is a really busy, busy city. We can ask everyone to keep repeating the message about washing your hands. We're taking it seriously, um, but we're also trying to get on with life. Um, you know, life has to go on. In the delay phase, the authorities will eventually have to make a decision about sporting events like football matches. In Italy, all sports are being played behind closed doors. At Brighton and Hove Albion, players are already restricted from shaking hands, doing high fives or posing for selfies with supporters. But one of the calculations is if fans aren't in stadiums, will they just be passing on the virus watching in pubs instead? The government is likely to save the most severe measures for when the virus hits its peak. And this message at the moment is there are no benefits to cancelling large events if people keep following the health advice. Lucy Manning, BBC News, Brighton. The number of people who've died from coronavirus in Italy has jumped by 41 today to 148, the second highest death toll after China. All schools and universities across Italy have been closed for at least a week to try to stop the spread of the virus, which has now infected more than 4,000 people there. France has announced three more deaths, taking the total to seven, with over 400 cases of coronavirus reported. President Emmanuel Macron said today that an epidemic was inevitable. And the United States government has approved emergency assistance of $8.3 billion to combat the spread of the virus across the country. And California has declared a state of emergency after announcing its first coronavirus death, bringing the U.S. death toll to 11. Well, our health editor, Hugh Pym, is outside the Department of Health for us now. And the first death from coronavirus here in the UK, but the government's message still very much keep calm. Yes, Sophie, it's clearly been a very difficult day, of course, for the family of the first patient in the UK to die with coronavirus. Officials here at the Department of Health extending their sympathies feel sadly this was going to happen at some stage. The message is don't expect any big new policy interventions soon. They're all being weighed up, the options like closing schools. And both Matt Hancock, the health secretary, and Chris Whitty, chief medical advisor, have said the problem is you've got a social cost without necessarily a lot of evidence that it helps halt the spread of the virus. There may be guidance in the weeks ahead to older people on looking after themselves, for example, avoiding crowded public spaces. One new bit of guidance today is to those coming back to the UK from Italy. Up until now, the advice is if you're in northern Italy and come back with symptoms, you should self-isolate and call 111 or go online. Now that advice has been extended to those coming back from everywhere in Italy to the UK. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, thank you. And you can find out plenty more information as well as the latest developments around the world on the BBC News website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash news or you can also look on the BBC News app.